Today's video is sponsored by Progress. Now, if you don't know who Progress is, they're behind Kendo UI, they created NativeScript, they do a lot of stuff in the mobile development landscape, and they created this ebook. It's 100% free. In the description below, make sure you click on the link. You can put your email address in and get this ebook, and it has everything about the mobile development landscape. It's actually a pretty interesting read. It talks about mobile development in the early days and what it's like to create mobile apps today. So make sure you click on that link in the description and you can download this free ebook and let's begin. Hey developers, today we're going to show you something really neat. I'm going to show you how Vue listeners works inside Vue.js. Now this is a really good tip that you guys should know to be able to use listeners and events a little bit easier in Vue.js and you might find it useful on your next project. Now, if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a software developer. I'm a full stack developer. I have years of experience and I am the author of the Vue.js in Action book. I have some amazing courses that I've done. I put the links below in the description below. So if you're interested in Vue.js, make sure you check those out and click on them. Um, I actually teach a whole course on Vue.js and Nux.js, which will be awesome if you guys check that out. And also, if you like this channel, make sure you click that subscribe button. So what I'm going to show you here is I went ahead and created a sample app that shows you uh, that we'll use to test out this listener. Uh, so if you look in the API documentation, it describes this listeners is it contains the parent scope beyond event listeners without the .NATA modifiers. This can be passed down to an inner component via VON listeners, useful when creating tra transparent wrapper components. So this might be good for if you're creating like a, a component that has a lot of different functionality. Maybe you're redoing a button component or an input component. Um, you're trying to create something a little bit special and you have a lot of event listeners or you want to just be more explicit and when you use your event listeners. So here's the app. Now here's what it looks like. It's nothing great. It just has this big button that calls super button. It doesn't do anything. It actually gives you an error right now, but I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, so I have my doc type, just my basic head and my body right here. I'm just importing the view. Now this is just in a single file. It has uh, both of my components in it. This certainly works the same if you're using view CLI and you're using single file components. So right here I have my script tag. I have a global component called super button and I have this template here and that's where we have all the information on the view component. And then I have the view instance here and all it has is a data component and this method called count clicks. So nothing too crazy there. So what we want to do first is every time we click the super button, which is this super button, a super button component, we want it to emit back to our parent component and update the clicks. So if you remember how to do that, that's easy to do with events. So what we can do here, here's where we're calling super button. So what I could do is I can just create my own event or I could just do click. And then if I remember correctly, I have count clicks here. So what this is saying is every time, every time this click event is triggered, it's going to trigger this count clicks. And what we'll do with count clicks is we'll just go this dot clicks plus plus so that way it gets incremented. So now if we have this count clicks here, we can look inside our global component, the super button that we're passing it to, and we can do something there. So we can actually add a click event here, but now we don't want count clicks here. We can actually, uh, we can, well, we do this a few ways. Let's say we just want to do this inside a method. So let's do test click. And then what we can do here is we can add a methods and then inside the methods, we would have this test click. And then inside test click is where we would do something. So we can do this dot emit, and then the mit class, which we called it click. So we would do emit click. So let's see if that works. We're gonna save it. We have an unexpected modifier because I need to put a comma here, save it again. And now if you see it, every time I'm pressing it, it's updating the clicks up here. So it's emitting this click event to here. 
and then it's updating the clicks. So that's pretty easy. Now, if you know a little bit about Vue, you're probably thinking, well, this is we can make this a little easier, and we, we can. So instead of actually having a whole method to do this, I can delete here, and I can just add it, I can put it inside these quotation marks, because I can actually put whole syntax in here, and I can put emit, and then emit like this, and then the click, and if we save that, and we get rid of this, you see it works the same way. So you see it's definitely, it's a little bit cleaner. We didn't have to create a method at all, and it works. Now what happens if we have multiple things? Let's say we add another one here. So let's add a mouse over. So if we do mouse over here, we can add in, let's say, count mouse. And we can have another method in here for count mouse. Okay, so you can see here that we went ahead and added in this new count mouse. And inside here, our super button, we added a mouse over event that triggers the count mouse. And you can see here, every time the mouse moves, it'll update. So what we can do for our super button here is we want to add another event to it. So now every time the mouse moves over it, we want it to increment. So we'll do it the same way. We can do mouse over here. And then inside here, we'll do a dollar sign emit. And then inside here, we'll put in the mouse over. And if we save that, and you can see every time my mouse moves over it, it increments like we expect. If we press it, it increments. But what we can do might be a little bit easier is we can use the event listeners. So one way to doing that is we could First off, we can do something like this. Instead of doing this mid a mouse over here, let's put it on a, I don't know, let's method it called test. And then on this mouse, mouse over test, we can then call the count mouse. But we can do that a couple of ways. We can actually do it like this. So we can do this dot listeners, see right here. And then we can put in the mouse over which we just created like this. And this will trigger every time the mouse moves over it, it'll trigger this listener, which will trigger the count mouse. So if we refresh it, you can see it's still working the same exact way. But you know, this isn't too, uh, this isn't really easy to use. So instead we can delete the test here. So what we could do is instead of using a method there, in our component, we can do something like this. We can get rid of both of these and instead do a V on and have it equal listeners. And if we do that and refresh it, you can see now it works this exact same way, but that this way we don't actually have to pass in every single listener into the button V on listener, which is really handy. So you can see it's working exactly the way it's expected. Now, if you wanted to do, um, you wanted to do a little bit more, like kind of break up the listeners, you could do something like this. You could create a computed property like this. And then inside the computed property, you would add in the, uh, you could create something called listeners. We can do something like this. We can do destructuring. So maybe we want just the mouse, but not the click. So we could do that. We can actually extract the click out and then do something like this where we're doing destructuring and then listeners. And then we'll just return listeners. And then we, one more thing we need to do is instead of doing the dollar sign listeners, we just do the computed property listeners. And now you can see when we move the mouse over it works, but if we press it, it doesn't work because it's this property listener is only listening to the click or the mouse event, not the click event. So that's just a few quick ways that you can use the listeners, this dot listeners inside your child components. I would highly recommend looking at that. Like I said, using beyond listeners here is much easier than putting every single 
one inside here on your button. Uh, let me know your guys' thoughts. Leave a comment below. Thanks.